Hello and welcome to the business of blockchain. I'm Jane King at the New York Stock Exchange. This special episode focused on a blockchain use case is sponsored by BitDeer. Today we're talking about fake news, a widespread problem of great concern, especially with U.S. presidential election approaching. So what can we do about it? Our guest is Paul Brody, Principal and Global Blockchain Leader at Ernst & Young. Welcome, Paul. Great Thank to you. see you again. So you built a blockchain-based tool to help the media fight fake news. Tell me about that. So it's a very simple tool. It uses a, a type of math called hashing. And hashing is very clever because if you put information in to this little mathematical algorithm, it pops out a number. And if you change even one letter in any of that information, it turns out a number that's completely different. And so it makes it very easy to say, look at an original article, run it through this little hashing algorithm, look at the output and say, do those two match? And if you put the original output on a public blockchain that cannot be tampered with, mm -hmm. then you have this permanent record of what the original article said, and you can go back and compare it at any time, and you can be certain that what you're reading is the original source information. Okay, so that will tell you if there's been any alteration. Right, even no matter article. how tiny, it produces mm -hmm. a completely different number. Okay. It's really, really useful for de detecting fakes. How does AI contribute to this problem? AI is super useful, but it's not as much of a game changer as people think. The way that misinformation works typically, and there was a great example very recently, the Economist did it nicely, you take AI or use some other tool to create an initially a false image and a story, but then you do other things on top of it. That You basically launder that information by putting it into a whole fake news website, and then you pass that information another time through layers of effectively fake social media personalities who retweet it and re-message it to each other. And then from there, it starts to gain traction. So it's, it's a whole process. It's remarkably similar in some ways to like money laundering. Like literally, you're taking the original bad item and then layering uh, even more fake information on top of yeah, it. And amplifying it. So exactly. now, what is the, the main impact of disinformation? And what motivated you to create this blockchain tool? So we created this blockchain tool at the request of a very creative leading edge uh, news agency in Italy called ANSA. So we had, we had developed this tool. It's a very basic tool that's used by corporations to secure documents, to prove origin, uh, origin of, of important documents. Uh, we use it with a couple of city governments for the same thing. And the news agency came to us and said, listen, we are experiencing some level of fake news, right? We're not sure how widespread it is. We know people are taking articles from our webpage and making things that look very very similar, but are altered slightly. We want to provide people a way to kind of check on this, and we think this technology that you have could be used for it. Mm -hmm. So we kind of got into it through a client request. Yeah, so how does blockchain help specifically? Blockchains, very specifically public blockchains, are useful because they create a permanent immutable record of a document. And the way that they do this is, the way the blockchains work is that every participant in a blockchain can have a full record of all the blockchain information, right? So when a, a transaction is confirmed on a blockchain, what happens is I get a copy, you get a copy. In the case of the Ethereum blockchain, there might be up to 10,000 copies scattered around the world. And although I could tamper with my record and you could tamper with yours, it's not practical to tamper with 10,000 records. So uh, what this allows you to do is create a secure, public record duplicated in many places that you can go back later and say, does the original data, the hash, match the current information I'm seeing? Mm -hmm. And during this election season, of course, deep fakes are of a particular concern. And we learned of an early example last January when New Hampshire residents received robocalls from an artificial voice of President Biden urging them not to vote in the primaries. So here's how your client, the Italian news agency ANSA, which you were referring to, reported that story. And then next to the article, there's a clickable button that says ANSA check. Yep. So tell us about ANSA and the tool you created for them and how, how did that work for them? So ANSA check is a really simple, elegant way to do this. What happens is ANSA sends us the full text of an article. We run it through a hashing algorithm, which gives us this very compact, like, fingerprint of the document, and then we take that fingerprint and we publish it on uh, the Polygon blockchain, which is a, uh, a, an associated blockchain with the Ethereum network. And then uh, that record, you can link that record back to the AnswerCheck uh, verification. And when you click on AnswerCheck, you can look at the public data 
And then you can even go and compare it to the public blockchain data. And if you want, if you're super paranoid, you can actually take the article text, run it through your own hashing algorithm, and check the result on the public network. Okay, so let's review what readers see when they click on the ANSA check button next to the articles. Now this page is in Italian, of course, <laughs> but what is it telling readers? Exactly? So what it's telling the readers mm -hmm. is uh, we've processed the, the, the article, there's a hash of the news itself, there's a certificate attached to the hashing algorithm, which sort of says where it's come from, and then there's a certificate attached to the block. And in a blockchain, the way blockchains work is they, they connect blocks of data together. So the block certificate says, effectively tells us when this information was done. And in this case, it says the date of the certificate, in this case was at the 29th of January of this year, for example. And how can readers trust the blockchain to be accurate? You can trust the blockchain to be accurate because of what I mentioned before, which is this tens of thousands of copies that are out there. And everybody who keeps a copy of the blockchain uses a special kind of software. And what it does is it's constantly checking, are my records the same as everybody else's? Mm -hmm. And when they get out of sync, it goes back to the last place where everybody was in sync and then starts rechecking all the, the next items. Oh. So the blockchain is designed to be a very, very secure, effectively impossible to tamper with record. Mm -hmm. Now you mentioned that ANSA had had some tampering uh, yes. with some articles. What were they seeing specifically? So what they were seeing mm -hmm. were these very clever, well-executed, look-alike web pages. Mm -hmm. So it looks like ANSA, it has content that looks like ANSA, it reads like ANSA, but some of the content is subtly altered. So uh, a good example of a, a deep fake story that was circulating, not necessarily on ANSA recently, was uh, an accusation that a, uh, a head of state, that person's wife, was spending U.S. aid money on luxury products. Now, this turned out to be untrue, but again, it kind of uh, it used the same set of formats. Like it looks like an original article, it looks like it was published on a real page. Mm -hmm. But again, if it was ANSA, there would have been no ANSA check button, or the ANSA check button would have led would you would have not been able to match the data from that to the data on the public blockchain. Did readers have any feedback about this? The, the feedback on this has been very, very positive. So, you know, we do, I think, for ANSA alone, something like on the order of a million articles a year, we get hundreds of thousands of verification checks going through the system. So we know people are, from time to time, checking these articles themselves to make sure. Yeah, and I would think even more so in the future as people become more familiar with this. Uh, you mentioned uh, this is built on Ethereum and Polygon. So correct and why those particular blockchains? So a couple of things that are important for us. First of all, when you're dealing with a million articles a year, you don't want it to cost too much money. So we had to have a blockchain like Polygon that is very, very low cost to operate a large number of transactions. Secondly, the beauty of Polygon is it's attached to the Ethereum network, so we borrow some of the security of the whole Ethereum ecosystem, and uh, we are able to use kind of industry standard connectivity to use to, to publish that data. Now we talked about verifying the article. What about photos or video or audio? Anything okay. that you, any digital file can be run through a hashing algorithm and produce a digital fingerprint. It's sometimes a little bit, one of the challenges that you'd have is, let's say I had a very big video file, even a small error, it could be an accidental error in the video file, will change the hashing outcome, and that will uh, potentially cause problems. It's somewhat harder to verify video and audio because the file sizes are large, and audio sounds the same even if it has a tiny error in it, if there's a transcription error or there's a... Uh, you know, oftentimes, for example, when data is streamed, mm -hmm. it's compressed. You lose some of the original in order to make it pass through like a, a mobile data connection. Oh, so verification yeah. of big files mm -hmm. is harder than something like text, where I can get all of the text mm -hmm. and I can put it through the system. Do you think the uh, technology will be able to do that someday? So we can do it today. You have to be extra careful to okay. go to the source and verify it. And you have to be a little bit careful. Otherwise, you might accidentally convince yourself that you're seeing fake news. Okay. Um, U.S. news organizations, have they shown interest in this? We've gotten some interest. Mm -hmm. there's, there's companies that have tried this. I think what's been missing is something super simple and scalable that we have proven with ANSA. So I'm hopeful that before the end of this year, we will see more widespread adoption. So it may not be too little too late for the election this year? 
I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> well, and this is a, not a problem that's going away. So even if we don't get it this year, it's definitely going to be used in the future. What can voters do in the meantime to recognize fake news? So I've read stuff that turned out to be fake news. And mm. every time that's happened to me, I've read an article and I thought to myself, that confirms all the worst things about that person or that organization. And it's a, it's this, it's almost like you want to be a little mistrustful of something that's so satisfying because like, I knew it, I knew they were bad. It kind of, like, if you feel that way after reading an article, uh -huh. you might ask yourself, like, is this exactly the perfect thing to make fake news over, right? Is it possible that, you know, my buttons are being effectively mm. pushed? I, whenever other people have said, Paul, you shared that article on social media and it turned out to be wrong, it's always been like that. Yeah. So there's a little bit of a gut instinct thing. You could, I don't think it's practical for everybody to check every article they read, but when you read something and you think to yourself, wow, that is really inflammatory, or I can't believe they're using USAID money for that, those kind of anger changes opinion, it changes votes, and, and that changes policy. And so you know, if you believe that your vote has value and power, and I certainly do, you should watch out for those things that seem so perfectly irritating mm. because they confirm all of your worst suspicions. Very interesting. Anything else you'd like to add about this fake news, the project you're working on? I want to see blockchain and AI be used for good, right? They, they often get used for bad things. Uh, I want to see them be used for good. I want to see them, uh, I want to see AI tools be used to help sort out uh, and do things like puncture our bubbles, show us information that we shouldn't, that we wouldn't normally seek out. Uh, I want better and simpler tools in blockchain. I think we have still not created the perfect way to make fakes easily visible. Mm -hmm. So we're still working on it. I want to see these things continue to get better and better. Yeah, thank you so much, Paul. Thanks for having me. And that is it for this edition of The Business of Blockchain. The special episode focused on blockchain use cases was brought to you by Bitdeer. I'm Jane King at the New York Stock Exchange.